navigate it to our folder. I guess inside this. CD program one. Let's open this using Visual Studio Code. In the last class, I have explained about the project structure. I have shown you what is this app.module, what is app.component.es, right? And then we just modified the content of app.component.html and we have seen how do we get the output, how do we get the output. Starting today, we are going to go deeper, right? And at the same time, after I explain things for a couple of hours, Right. Then last half an hour, we will try to utilize it for your practice, if that is okay for all of you, so that you also will right, get the crux of it, right? we will get the crux of it. Now, as I have mentioned in the last class, we will start our today's discussion with the concept of implementing a CRUD operations, the concept of implementing something called as what guys, CRUD operations. But in this, we need the interaction of an API. So you are going to get the list of employees from somewhere you have to display that in your application but from where are you going to get the list of employees right so for that you need an api you need an api right so as we do not right wanna get into the concept of api implementation i hope somewhere i should have one api when i used to teach dotnet for my previous so we used to have some api We can use a normal API or we can use a .NET Core based API. Let me just see.
this one just trying to find it guys just give me some time This is fine. This is okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to see if I would have deployed it onto some service. I'm calling that. Ah, you no, know, I am running that in a local system. This is okay, I guess. Maybe that was the one that was six, I guess. Thank you.
Né? System is like this. This is the correct one. All right, so I'll run this.
Sir, can you tell me the meaning of line twenty nine one? The employee controller as I'll, the return type. I'll I'll come to that now. So just hold on for some time. Once I run this, I'll explain what this API is, and then I'll take you to the Angular application. Okay. Now, let's open the browser. The API is running, guys. I'll explain you the API. Means I may not be able to explain you this code because most of you may not understand. And for an Angular developer, it's not important. Right? That is responsibility of a right backend guy who is providing you the service. It is running on 5001 local host colon. It's 10 o'clock. Swag down. So basically, when a developer develops, develops the backend API, as a front-end developer, how you will get to know what are the operation, operations that are supported by that particular API? In most of the organizations, they use either Swagger or Postman. If you are a front-end developer, and if you don't know the backend concepts, so what you need to do is you have to ask them for the Swagger link. Our postman link. So when you get the Swagger link, you have to visit that particular website. When you visit the particular website, you get it this way. You get it this way. Now it shows you that these are the operations. Employee weather forecast. These are two different operations, and in each one, you can see what it supports. It supports get, post, get with the specific ID, and then it also supports something called as delete. And similarly, here you have something called as weather forecast. Weather forecast supports only what guys get. Now, you can test this. You can test the API using this Swagger. So 
So click on this get. So this get is not having any parameter. So you can click on try it out. You can see we are getting the list of employees. We are getting the list of employees. Oh, sorry, sir. I due to some network issue, I read uh, uh, After uh, what is the start? I mean, just now I started. Uh -huh. oh. So till now I was facing some issues to find the project and run the API. So now yeah, I found. Said about the swagger, right? Sorry. Yes. So. A backend developer is responsible to implement the API related stuff. When they complete the implementation, you have to ask them for the URL. But when they give you the URL, how do you identify what operations are supported? And for get, what is the syntax? For post, what is the syntax? And what are the parameters that you have to pass? All this, you should find it. So for that, what do they do is they use, like they use either Swagger or Postman you have to use that URL and then you have to go through this. When you go through this, for example, if you click on post, you can see this is what it is expecting. You have to pass these details and then you can request the API. When you request the API, API will do the respective things in the backend. Is this clear, guys? It is the responsibility of an API developer, a backend developer, to give you the API. The API can be implemented using uh, right, uh, .NET or using Java or it can be anything. Hello. Yes, sir. Vikant, sir, if you don't mind, uh, can you just uh, give the overview of the how the flow works from where to where it calls, call goes? I didn't, I didn't implement any Angular application. We didn't do that. I just opened okay. a .NET Core application. Mm -hmm. I ran that in which I have already earlier implemented the API using which you can perform your CAD operations. This is just the API. Okay. We are, a, we are going to implement our Angular application that works by calling this API. Okay. Is this clear so, for everyone, guys? So we we have to uh, get uh, that is uh, get through this swagger swagger uh, URL to check the API. Either swagger or Postman. These are the two things that most of the organizations uses. So if you have a backend developer in the team who has implemented the API, you should ask him for the swagger link or Postman link using which you can test the API to understand what are the parameters the API is having, what are the right data types that it is returning. So if you want to implement the front-end application, you should know the back-end API, right? You should know what parameters you have to pass, what values you are going to get, how you are going to take that and display that in the application. For that, you should know the API, right? Not technically, but functionally. So that is where you use either Swagger or Postman. Sir? Uh, for uh, practice purpose, uh, we uh, suppose we don't have any API, like then I'll give you this API. Man. Okay, okay. I'll give you this API. Thank you. Are there in the web? There are many APIs, right? So for all these, like you have different projects available over the web also. So anyway, I'll I'll share you this, but I'm just telling you. Even if you don't have this, you can still work. So you will have. Or different sources available in the net. Can you just show your uh, .NET code where all these functions are there? Get code, delete. You see, this is get, this is get with parameter, this is okay. post, this is delete, these are the operations. Uh, uh, they are can there you please call me? Sir, can you, uh, why that create is not there? Huh? Hold on, sir. create, create. Create, do this you have any verb yeah. for create? No. What is the verb for that? See, the point is here, I don't want to teach .NET Core because the intention is to understand Angular. So okay. that is where I'm just trying to be a little away from this. So okay. in .NET Core, how it works is not, you will not be able to see the method here. Okay. 
here you will not see the method basically what is important is this attribute if you don't have this attribute then you will not have this post here it works based on those attributes the reason why i am uh, right not going deeper into this why i am not explaining this is there may be people who don't know or who is not from dotnet background right if you are not from dotnet background so me trying to explain this api will fail they will not be able to understand anything and moreover that is not right what we want to learn here we want to focus on learning angular right so but for that we need an api so i had an api from my previous class so we are just using that so i opened the api i ran the api from the time they complete the api development then this is how an angular developer or right front end developer is going to understand the details about the api that is needed for him in order to proceed for the implementation is that clear guys yes is everyone it is, clear it is the local host of that particular mission right so whether that the particular this particular url will work for all no it will not work so that's where i said right i'll give you the source code or i can host it so like you can host it anywhere and then you can access or i can give you the source code so when i give you the source code you will get the source code like this so what you just need to do is whatever the operations i have performed open this solution file once you open the solution file this is what you get and here you will have this button to run you run this you will get this window when you get this window it indicates that your api is working and how do you test it you open a browser just try this this url is what you are going to get here so local host colon 5000 then i attached just swagger then you get this output okay is this clear for everyone guys are any confusion not the source code right i am least bothered about the source code because i don't want to explain that source code and if we use postman then how to uh, use it like see you cannot decide whether you are going to use swagger or postman right the back end team would have decided whether they are going to expose this api via swagger or postman and they will have that respective code in their project if you see if i if i am showing you using swagger i have already done that configuration in the project so similarly they will do that so you don't worry about that okay so here i have done the coding that is needed to right use swagger for this particular project then only i am able to get it otherwise it will not work so you see i have added some code related to that swagger so now our api is ready now taking this api remember before you start implementing your front end functionality play with this api guys right so try to call all these methods whatever the methods different methods you are seeing here try to call all this and try to see what response you get get familiarized with this then start your api sorry angular application implementation that may comes easy for you otherwise it will be little difficult all right so now let's open our application do initially i'll be showing you right uh, performing this crud operations in a table little later i'll explain you a grid guys right i'll show you something called as ag grid and we will try to uh, work with that we'll try to display uh, data into that grid right that is something we'll do it little later right not now that is right very early now what do we want to do we want to create a table and in the table we want to display the data but how do you get the data how do you get the data for your angular application how will you get the data in order to get the data 
You had to call what? API. You had to call the API. Be interactive, guys. Okay, that is where you will be able to learn things better. So you had to call the Thanks, API. Sir, uh, what is it? This ng for is used for? Is it your first class, ma'am? Are you attended the last class? Yeah, I attended. So I have explained, right? What is this ng for, guys? Can anyone? Explain about this ng for. It's the ang loop command for the for loop. Loop basically it's a loop. Now you want to loop through this array, and then if array has ten elements, you want to generate how many allies? Ten allies. That gets added to this ul. Now we are going to. I'll take this out anyway. This this is not what we are going to do. So, when someone loads this application, this Angular application, what is your requirement? What has to happen? Basically, you take Gmail. The moment you log into Gmail, what will happen? They will show you all the list of mails, right, in the inbox. Similarly, when someone opens this application, what do we want to do as? we want to display the list of employees but for that but for that when your application dead or when this component gets rendered you may want to call the api you may want to call the api get the data and display the data now out of this available methods in the api which method you would like to call initially to get the list of employees out of all these methods which method should be called to get the get list method. of employees get method. get method without parameters right will give you a list of all the employees now when i call this i will get list list of what list of employees list of employees so for that first what you should do is you should create a class guys you should create a class Call as what employee, any name. You can give it whatever the name you like, and then here I'll have parameters ID. Okay. So whatever the data type that you want, you can give that. I'll get some errors. I want to explain you those errors. Let those errors come because I want you to understand that error so that you will be able to code it better. Salary. That is going to be a number. Now, if you observe this, you see what data it is returning: ID, name, location, salary, and what department ID. Damodar Var Prasad, can you please go on mute? Department ID. I declared it as number. Now, if you observe, you are getting these errors. Guys, can anyone tell me what these errors? I'll try to guess. I just created a class called as employee, in which we are having these properties basically. Now, if you keep the cursor, you see this guys. What is that? Need to initialize some value to this uh, ID you, or name. Yes, exactly. You created a variable or maybe a property. But that has no value. So what you can do? So you can initialize some values. We can do that in different ways. I'm just using one way. You can use constructor and you can do that as well. Right now I am using the initializer approach. I just created this class, and this class has five properties. These are the properties, and it says that this class is not used. Yes, we are going to use this now. In the app component, in the app component, what I'll do is I'll create a variable 
are basically a property called as what employee list and what is the data type of that it is what this is going to hold what guys it is going to hold list of employees it is going to hold list of employees so what we do as we say employee array array is represented using something called as what square brackets and the same problem so i just initialize it to null now when i initialize it to null see what will happen it says it is not assignable to this so what do we do how do you handle that you just initialize it to an empty array you just initialize it to an empty array that will go off now at least to start with what i do is every class that you create in typescript can have something called as a constructor guys can have something called as what constructor i created a constructor constructor of which class app component class now in this constructor what i would like to do now what is our requirement we want to call the api we want to call the api get the list of employees and assign that list to what employee list now what this employee list has to do this employee list will hold list of employees and that data we are going to use it here so let's do one thing let's create this html basically this is what we call it as template so i just say employee list so sir that constructor will not be the same name as the class name here unlike in yeah. c sharp where yeah. constructor name is going to be the class name here yeah. you are going to use a keyword called as what keyword constructor okay. in typescript they have provided a keyword okay okay understood uh, if you have multiple classes then what will be the every okay. class will have its own constructor this class also you can create your own constructor in which class you write for example if you see automatically see the syntax constructor app component if you do that in employee class you see okay so we are creating a constructor for the app component not the employee now i created it for employee class and here we created it for app component okay now so i create a table simple html to start with we had ph id name location salary department id so t head and then you have something called as what t body now in this t body we want to display the data so for that you need tr but how many trs needs to be added to this table body uh, it can be unlimited that is dependent on number of elements you get from the api and that will be assigned to something <coughs> called as what employee list now how do you look through this list now i have explained you ng4 star ng4 is equals to let emp of what is the list name employee list let emp of employee list now what do we do so here emp dot id
So that star is mandatory. Yes. So you are using a built-in directive that okay. is provided. Department ID. Is this clear, guys? This is what I have shown you in the last class. I just explained you you displaying the data of roles. So for that, I just created one sample, and that is what we have seen. Any any confusion here? Any confusion here, guys? Uh, in, uh, in this case, we have only one employee data, right? So no, there is no data at all. Okay. Yeah, there is like some. Uh, that is empty. Uh, data. Okay. Plus empty. We have not yet connected to the API. So. Yeah, I didn't write the code to connect to the API. Yeah. So we are at to call the API, get the data. That we will do, right? I'll as it is our first class with respect to getting into the concepts. I don't want to go in a hurry. I want all of you to understand things well. Is so this clear? without API, uh, you want to you won't be able to display it. We will not get the data. For that, either okay. you have to hard code the data here. Okay. Or if I run this application now, we will get it empty. So now if I open our Node.js command prompt, how do you run this application? ng serve. So the ng server will automatically launch the browser with that local host, right? Yes. So in case of multiple browser, how can we choose which should be the default? In your system, you set a default browser, right? Which uses that default browser. Okay. At a system level, you will set the default browser, right? Yeah, I cannot set it for Angular alone, right? Mm. Okay. So can't we run the Visual Studio code directly instead of launching it from ng serve? You cannot run Visual Studio code. You can run this command from Visual Studio code, but again, it has to be via command only. So here you will not have any option to run. Okay, there is a run, so I just start to check. Run start debugging. Like dot .NET. You see, again, it is going to be via what? NPM. This command only. This is not like .NET, Visual Studio, basically. Now you see again, behind the scenes, they execute which command? NGSO. NGSO, the same thing. What the iPhone O represents? NGSO iPhone O. I'll tell you. So you see what the, what the problem here is, guys? It's already in use. Okay. 
Now, can anyone guess what is this NG sau? O stands for? Oh, oh right. Open. Okay. Just guess, guys. Yes. Just like see what different commands can be there. Like that means O stands for what? I just think it in that way. But in that uh, terminal, we did not mention the O, so I just put. No, I'm just asking. Just think what O can be. Maybe operations like functions. No, usually O stands for O. It just open. Open. So O basically stands for what? Open. So opens the URL in what? Default browser. Open the URL in the default browser. Is that clear? All right. So now. Anyway, I opened it and it is running. So here, if I go, if I say localhost colon four two double zero, now you can see there is no data. The list is empty. How do we get the data? For that, we should call what? API. API. How do you call the API? You should write some code, right? Now, important point is this is important for all of you. If if you know, it's well and good. If you are new to this programming, it's important. You have your API. API is already running, and then now you have your Angular application. Now this Angular application. Should send a request to the API, and this API receives a request, process the request, generate the response, and send the response back. And send the response back. Now that response will be list of employees, and that it has to display. That's good. But now question is, this is running as a different application, and this is running as a different application, and by default. When you send the request from one application to other application to process a request, this API will not entertain the request that comes from a different origin. So for that, in this API, remember always you have to enable something called as cores. If you want to allow accessing that API resources from a different resource, for that if you have observed the API project, here I have enabled something called as what add cores, add cores policy, and I have used something called as use cores. And here, I have enabled cores with that policy. And many times, what will happen is when you are accessing, right, an API from an Angular application, you may get cores related error. You may get cores related error, right? You may not get the output, right? And then you may be wondering why we are not getting the output. Developers might have forgotten that the backend team developers might have forgotten that. When you look at the browser. You will have errors, right? In the errors, if you get cores related error, then you update the API developer that you are getting cores related error, and it is their responsibility to fix that, so that your Angular application will be able to access the API. Will be able to access the API. Is that point clear, guys? Yes, sir. Now, let's go ahead and call them. Now, from our application, we want to call API. For that, you have to send the request. As what type of request? Which protocol you are going to use to send the request now? API works. HTTPS. Right. So, in order to send the request using HTTP, basically, you have to import. You are going to use a class called as HTTP client class, but that class is there in a different module. 
that HTTP client class is there in a different module. So first what you have to do is you have to import the module. You have to import the module. I have specified that class as HTTP client module class. We should import this class. We should import this class. But in order to import that class first, you should specify where is that class. So either I can go ahead and add import here or you do what? Control dot. It's not able to recognize that. Then we don't have an option except go here and then say HTTP client module from at the rate angular slash common slash you will have HTTP. This is there basically. Uh, how you come to know that it's in common path? For that you should know the subject, right? Uh, okay. So I know the subject because I Google I right when I was learning Angular from seven, eight mm -hmm. years back, I did all that. That's where I, I know all these things, right? Otherwise you have to go to right? HTTP client module. You just say in Angular. Right? So if you go here, So you have this HTTP client module, right? So now you can see here, this mm -hmm. is part of what? Oh, got, got it. So I'm importing a module, call as which module? HTTP client module. Good. So next what I'll do, I'll go here. And I am going to use a class called as which class HTTP client class. So you should import that also. Import HTTP client. Remember, module name is HTTP client module, and inside that module there is a class called as HTTP client. So in the module, I am importing the module, and in the component class. I'm going to import what? The class. Class is what? HTTP client class. Using this class, what are we going to do? We are going to perform what request? HTTP requests. So remember the flow guys. You import the modules in the module class and then those modules will have the classes and those classes are available for all the components that are part of which module? This app module. App module may consist of multiple components. Right now it has only one component. Now components is something that we'll deal a little later. Right? I'm going to explain you components in detail. Right now we have only one component. Remember that. So that's where we are just seeing only one class that is part of this module. But going forward, you will understand that you will create multiple components and one module will be consisting of multiple modules. I would have told you in the last class. Sorry, I missed. Uh, what is that uh, significance of HTTP? Why would I see Significance of HTTP That is what I was explaining from past ten minutes. Right. So I request you to right, go through this video, sir. After I am done, because right, others may feel right, little uncomfortable if I keep explaining the same thing again. So we have to proceed further, right? So that module has a class called as HTTP client. Now we are going to use this class object in order to send the API request. Right? If you are not speaking, be unmute, please. When I ask a question, please respond. Otherwise, try to be unmute, please. <coughs> now 
using this class we have to create an object and use that object to send the request to your api well and good how do you create object of a class is the question how do you do that guys how do you create object of a class by using the new keyword by using new keyword new keyword right okay. and second will be if the interfaces will be there then we can also uh, call at the specific function through the interface through a specific function that also you can do that so there are uh, various ways so one is the usual flow is they use something called as new keyword and they create the object they create the object so here what i am going to show you is as this is a built in class that is provided this class can be something called as you see this read this description performs http request and the next point is important this service is available as what injectable class this is available as an injectable class so i am going to inject i am going to inject so how do you inject you inject in a constructor but what is the syntax now syntax here is a variable name you see this here how are we doing this yeah. variable name colon data type variable name colon I, data type I so think here, angular like uh, the interfaces cannot support this in angular no no you have interfaces here also so i'll take you that i'll take you that right okay, so we okay, say fine. http and then we say the type now http is a variable name or you call it as object whatever you call it as and it is of which type http client it's like id it's of what type number name string location string salary number department id number similarly here now http is of which type http client variable name is http and the data type is http client now using that using that what request you would like to send you see using that object these are the methods that you can call so what request you would want to send now get get we want to get list of employees right so we say get and then you see what it is asking us to pass the url pass the url so we say https colon local local host 4200 sorry 4200 is this application right 5001 slash api slash employee you may get it out how how do i know that is what i have explained you here right so look at this when you call maybe here also you will have that see the request url this is the url i just mentioned here you can copy paste from there also when you send the request here when you did try it out or execute you will get this so when you get it you can pass it here all right dot there will be something called as what subscribe the important point is now when you send the request when you send the request this get method returns what list of employees but you should tell you are expecting the data in the form of format of what so you need the data in the form of what an array of employees you need the data in the form of what guys array of employees http dot get and then i specified that when i call this get method what is the return type i am expecting so automatically the data that you get it 
will be converted into this employee array and will be passed dot you will have something called as subscribe and to the subscribe you have to pass basically in javascript there is something called as arrow function i request you to note down that guys when you get some time over the weekend read about something called as what arrow functions and read about something called as async await right in javascript you have these things i request you to read them guys whenever you get some time so subscribe i am going to write an arrow function so what do we specify now what are we going to do that list we will assign it to what you get list of employees that list you are going to assign it to what when we call this api we get list of employees guys now that list you should assign it to what variable here employee list i created a variable here right now to that i should assign that now this is important how do you access the employee list here you cannot directly access employee list guys now if i just do this this i'll get a error i'll get an error what is the error it says this employee list i don't know what is this employee list so when you create a variable remember that is the typescript syntax if you want to access that variable anywhere within that class you should use something called as what this keyword this dot employee list you should use something called as what this dot employee list now what it says is this has any so what i will specify Really, earlier we don't get this kind of error, so we upgraded it to six, right? So, sorry, Miller fifteen, right? With TypeScript versions, they'll change the syntax ways. subscribe only that is the problem so earlier we don't get this error so now <coughs> syntax is slightly changed so you should keep check on that so if you keep the cursor here you can see list represents employee array that we assigned it to employee list now that employee list is what we are displaying here that employee list is what we are displaying here now let's open our angular application and let's see if we get this data or not can you see the data here because whenever you make a change and whenever you save it it will automatically right get refreshed 
So that is where you get the output. Is this clear guys? Right now I am displaying it in a table without any styling and all. Right? So styling, like if you are interested you can explore that. Otherwise as I said, I will explain you about grid. Right? We will take it in a grid. So there I will show you how to style the grid with different styles. Thank mm -hmm. you. 